I, I know I'm jumping around, but again, it's kind of crazy. Like we're chatting here because we come from two different, I guess, spheres, if you will. And in the sense of like how much sports media has changed in the sense of like, we were just talking that, you know, communications and, and definitely doing that whole thing. There's a lot of merit to it, but it's a lot of cutting your teeth, working for free, working tough jobs and just trying to get that big break versus now <clears throat> I feel like social media has changed the game in the sense like you don't really have to do that anymore. I mean, if you can go right. on social media, be personable, have a personality, you can kind of just build your own thing and not have to, I mean, you are technically, I guess, cutting your teeth, but it's a much different type of grind and much different type of journey. I'll ask you, because again, you've seen the evolution of social media since you've been doing play by play. And I asked Andy Demetra about this as well, but how crazy, I guess, has it been to watch that? Because you're somebody that's pretty active on social media, I feel like. And if somebody tweets at you, I feel like you're, you're pretty good about like responding and talking with people and stuff like that. But how crazy has that been to just see the way that sports media has evolved with social media kind of taking over? I think it's really been, you know, a, a good thing. Uh, it, it's, you know, paved the way for people to, to just get out there. Um, and if you don't have that opportunity where, you know, there's a, let's say there's a local radio station in town, you can kind of create your own now. Mm -hmm. uh, you can even, you know, take a microphone to a local high school baseball game and, and you know, kind of sell it yourself and sit in the bleachers and, and call play by play that way and, and just kind of get some reps in and get, get the practice in. Uh, one thing I do try to tell, you know, people that are trying to start out, especially young uh, uh, up and coming broadcasters is, you know, don't do things for free mm -hmm. because it makes it, <clears throat> harder on everybody else because uh you know really and truly people are not tuning in for birch Antley. they're tuning in because they want to watch the game right uh, and unfortunately sometimes in our business you know a camera is worth more than than the town mm -hmm. <laughs> and so uh the powers that be will put more emphasis on that as far mm -hmm. as you know financial rewards uh they're going more toward you know the the technical side as a because they feel like you know well hey we've got these guys over here. They sell, they'll do it for free. Let's, let's mm. grab them. So I try to you know, tell people, Hey, it's, it's really not good for, you know, our industry mm. as far as broadcasters is concerned to, you know, sell yourself short. You have to, you know, you're, you're valuable regardless. Mm. Um, now sure. Go out there and take anything you, you can. Don't, don't say no to jobs. If you feel like you're, you're qualified, but uh, you know, don't sell yourself short. Mm -hmm. I, I certainly don't try to advocate people doing things for free. Now, have you done radio? Company, uh, you know, up and coming doctors, of course, they, they, they don't, you know, <laughs> say, hey, I'll, I'll do your heart surgery. Right. For you. you know, it's, it's uh, <laughs> you know, they, they're going to get paid for it. Right, for sure. I, I was going to ask, so you've done both probably radio and I guess, you know, SEC Network Plus, we can, it's obviously TV. So you've done both. Do you prefer yeah, one over the other? And then got into TV. Yep. Do, do you prefer one over the other? I mean, I know there's obviously the joke of you have the face for, for radio or whatever. I mean, but like, do you, do you prefer doing radio or TV more? I guess I'm curious. I prefer, I think it's a lot harder to do radio because, you know, you have to paint the entire picture. The picture is already there on TV. You have to speak right. and, and narrate to what you're watching. Um, although today, you know, I think people that are watching broadcasts on uh, the digital side, you know, SEC network plus, and, and really, just about any network now mm. they're watching on their phone they're watching on their laptop they're watching you know on the go and they're doing other things so you still mm. have to kind of at times treat it like a radio broadcast because you're not getting that full attention right um but you know really and truly i, I kind of look at my job as being a traffic cop uh, i'm there just to kind of you know make sure that uh, everything is flowing smoothly uh, and, and talk to the pictures and, and just add some, you know, some stories and add some flair to it. Uh, with radio, you've got to be, you know, nonstop. You can't have any dead air and you can let the game breathe more uh, in TV. So I do like that stuff. Yeah, I, I'm just fascinated, Birch, talking to you because it is crazy because even I remember like, I think it was like maybe 2008 or something or, or just times before, like, you know, we just take it for granted. Now we have SEC Network Plus and every single game is streamed, which you know, I, I think you'd probably agree that I think college baseball is still, you know, an untapped market. It's still underutilized. It's still under broadcast. It should be on TV more. But like, I remember like late 2000s, South kind of being in a regional and having to literally follow it on the game cast. Like there was yeah. not any streaming. I remember like 2010 and 11 when I was sitting in my dorm at Newberry, you know, watching those teams. And there was one guy, I think that had a camera above home plate. There was no audio, mm -hmm. not, but like you, you had this one camera and there was this like, secret website i guess to add like all these college 
college team streams. Like, I don't even know where this came from, but whatever. But, like, it's kind of crazy just when you really think about it. Again, we take it for granted because we have all this technology. But having SEC Network Plus, and it's like every single, basically college, especially the Power Five, they have, like, a full broadcast, um, you know, operation. Go, they have all the cameras. They have all the mics. They have all the broadcasters. Like, it's kind of crazy when you think about it that, that we have that at our disposal now. Yeah, and it's, you know, just for, let's say, for last night's game, for example, uh, South Carolina and Charleston Southern, SEC Network Plus broadcast, there's 20 to 30 people uh, working mm. that, that broadcast. You All you hear is myself and you hear my analyst, Kip Balknight, right. but the ones you don't see that are, are making sure that everything is looking good and sounding good, there's, you know, 25 people there uh, that are that are working that. So, mm. you know, it's a it's a big deal. It's a big undertaking. And Gosh, I remember, you know, growing up in, in Batesburg, Leesville and being a Gamecock fan, listening to Bob Fulton on the radio and even Mike Morgan, there was only one station in the entire state that carried right. it. You had to live in Columbia to listen to South Carolina baseball on the radio. That right. kind of changed, you know, when South Carolina got Ray Tanner and, and things really started to take off and, right. and all the trips to, to Omaha and the two national championships.